What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that allows you to quickly create environments inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so today's extension, or today's add-on is called Real Environments. You can find it on the Blender Marketplace. And basically what it does is it allows you to quickly create different environments, and it's doing it um, procedurally using textures in Inside of Blender. So you can find this and uh, this is a $20 add-on but what it does is it basically allows you to create a lot of different kinds a lot of different kinds of it calls them biomes but basically environmental models inside of Blender and so once you purchase and download it you want to enable it by going up to edit preferences and we're just gonna search for and we're just gonna search for environments and you just wanna make sure you check the box for material, real environments. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a little window right here. And so the way that this works is it basically takes a plane and it applies a material to it and then it uses that material inside of the rendering extension in order to create this environment in 3D. So let's start by deleting out our default model. We'll add in a plane and we wanna make it fairly large. So let's go ahead and type in a value of 2000 for right now. And then the other thing you might want to think about doing is you might want to think about turning your camera clipping on so you can see this whole thing or turning your camera clipping up. So I'm going to set my end clipping on this to something like 5000. And so the way this is going to work is you just need to select your plane and then you can see how there's a number of different environments that you can select in here, but you just click on add. And so initially when you do this, you're gonna get this kind of weird result. Don't worry too much about this for right now. Basically what this is doing is this is just applying the texture to the face, but we need to make some changes in order for this to work. So to start off, what we need to do is the only way this is gonna show up is if we render it in cycles. So it doesn't really work in Eevee. That's something to be aware of. So what you wanna do is you wanna first of all set your render engine to cycles. And you wanna make sure that you drop down to the option for feature set, experimental. And so the reason you want to set this to experimental is because that's the way that the micro displacement in here is going to work. And so then what you need to do is you need to add a subdivision modifier. So we're just going to come over to our modifiers, click this button right here. We're going to add a modifier. We're going to call it sub and we're going to select subdivision surface. And you want to make sure you check the box for adaptive. So you want this to be the adaptive subdivision modifier. So click on that. And then this is going to allow this to subdivide along with the actual surface that we're going to be creating in here. One thing that might get a little bit weird about this, if we zoom out a little bit, is you can see how when this applies your subdivision modifier right here, what it's doing is it's subdividing this, but you're getting this weird kind of angle around the outside. And so if you were to turn that off, it would look more like this. The way you can avoid that is just by tabbing into edit mode, then just right clicking and subdividing this a couple times. So what that does is that subdivides this so you don't get um, the creasing along the corners right here or the uh, subdivision along the corners right here and I may subdivide this one more time but notice how we still don't really have a result in here and I'm going to tab back into um, object mode notice how we still don't have a result that's because we're currently in material preview mode which is not where we want to be we want to be in rendered mode and again remember that we want to make sure that we set this to cycles before we do this and I'm going to go ahead and click on this button right here for rendered mode. And so notice that this came in here and this significantly changed the way that this looks. And we'll just do a shift A, we'll add a light. We'll just call it a sun for right now. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit and we'll turn the power of the sun up to maybe like five for the moment. And we'll just move this so that it points in this direction so we get a little bit of a shadow. So what you're gonna notice about this is you're gonna notice that this is coming in and this is procedurally generating um, this surface based on, or this is procedurally generating a canyon based on the surface that we had in here before. And so this is doing this using the material um, that's being applied in here. So if we were to go into our shading, for example, and we need to set this to rendered mode and we'll move this 
up a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. But if you were to come in here and you were to take a look at the nodes associated with this, this is basically using your texture in here in order to create um, whatever whatever kind of um, biome you had selected. So in this case, it's the canyon. There's a ton of different options in here that you can adjust. So not only can you adjust things like the height, so we could bring this down to like 75 or something like that, or we could take it a lot higher, like up to 150. And if you take it up to 150, I'm going to have to move my camera a little bit. But notice how this will adjust procedurally based on the settings that you set in here. And I do want to note that this does look better when you actually come through and render it out. So I don't want to do that because that takes a little bit longer. Um, but I'll show you an image that I did. So when, do you, when you render this out, it's gonna look a little bit more like this. I will note that this is using a Voronoi node in order to create kind of the crinkliness on here that is visible to the eye and you can see it, but the alternative is these look really smooth. And honestly, if you kind of zoom out and you do some other things with this, I think the result looks really good. Um, but you can change things like your height and your water level. And then you can also, if you wanted to, there's a button right here in each one of these and there's a lot more things that you can change and adjust in here so for example there's things like your base there's things like your canyon slope that you can adjust in here and notice how when you do this this is automatically adding that in here so obviously you don't want a huge jump like this but you can see how it's using this in order to create that slope so you can adjust things like the slope, you can adjust all the different bump mapping and other things like that as well. So this is all adjustable and then you can just kind of pack this back in right here. So you can definitely make changes to this really quickly. And so this comes with a number of different environments and you can adjust them on the fly. So for example, let's say I wanted to take this to a desert. We could just select our object, take it to the desert and click on add. And notice how what this does is this actually adjusts this and changes it so that we've got a desert in here. And then you could go in and you could adjust the different settings for the desert in here as well. And notice how these are all a little bit different. So you can add like procedural rocks to your desert and other things like that as well. So but making this change is really easy. So you can adjust this so that it can be a grassland or other things like that. And so the one thing I'm not a giant fan of about this, and I don't know how you'd get around it, is because these are being created by textures, this isn't actual true 3D geometry in here. I think there might be some things you could do with like baking it or something like that. But if you're looking to create a background like this or create an environment like this, this is a really fast way to do it instead of having to go through and mess around with a bunch of nodes or anything like that. And so one thing I will note about this is um, if you're using a lot of these settings, it doesn't come with a water shader. So what that means is this actually shades these in as kind of a green color on your islands, but it doesn't actually come with a water shader. And the reason for that is because if it came with a water shader, then this would just be transparent and you'd be able to see through into space. So the recommendation from the developer is that you just add a another plane like this, and then you apply a water shader to that plane. So for example, this is a, a water shader that I downloaded from BlendSwap. So you can download this as well and import it. So it's a procedural water shader, but you could basically take this shader and then um, select the plane that you added and just to add that water material in here in order to create the water. So you could also use like a noise, um, applied to like a glass texture or something like that as well. But that's how you would add the water and then this would actually show through the green so you'd get more of a seaweed effect um, down below. So that's how you'd add water to go along with this add-on. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. What do you think about this add-on? Is it something you could see yourself using? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.